Up next, we've got a review of Horizons from Daily Magic Games. All right, I have been a, I would almost say fanboy of Daily Magic Games since first discovering them at Origins, Origins 2016. And no, it's not just because they gave me purple nerds to play their games. At the con, after doing a demo of Valeria Card Kingdoms at their booth, uh, Deanna and I love the game so much, we bought it outright on the spot. We don't do that. Uh, like that's, that's like almost sight unseen, right? We played the game once, like, I gotta have this. It was the first game we bought of that con, first game we bought in 2016. Since then, I've pretty much kept up with all the Valeria games. Uh, I've got all the Card Kingdom expansions, as well as all the offshoot games, Quest of Valeria, Villages of Valeria, and so on. Um, I also picked up Chocolatiers, that's more recently, and we are yet to be disappointed with all these games. And when I first saw Horizons, and I gotta admit, I didn't see any buzz on this one. I, I, from what I understand, it was Kickstarted, but I, I missed that. There's a lot of Kickstarter games. When I first saw it, I just thought it was going to be a sci-fi retheme of Valeria. Whether or not necessarily exactly a Card Kingdoms knockoff, it was going to be like it. I was expecting a card-based tableau builder where I'm looking at hands of cards and playing cards in front of me, building a tableau. And wow, was I surprised to learn that it is not at all, like not even close. Like I was totally at the wrong mechanics, wrong ballpark. Well, there are cards in the game, and I could say it's somewhat card-driven. Horizons is much more of an action selection, area control board game. Yeah, no, uh, I've been looking forward to playing this, and I hope uh, that it's definitely going to be on the list for next time we're down, I think. Now, this is a sci-fi themed board game for two to five players, designed by Live Moat, featuring art by Mihailo Dimitrevsky, otherwise known as Miko. I love Miko's art, so I'm a huge fan of his art. He did all the art for Valeria, did the art for um, Raiders of the North Sea as well. So, love the art, the art's amazing. Most of the games I played on the Horizons have been about an hour, with a couple being really short, which I'll get to in a minute. Now, in Horizons, each player is going to play, take on the role of a spacefaring race, just starting their expansion out into the galaxy. Galaxy is composed of a number of stars, equal to the number of players. At the start of the game, each player is going to add one planet, drawn randomly, to the stars. Then the race picks one planet type that's already in play to be adapted to out of the six types, and you get one alien ally card to start, and that card is the same for all the players. Yeah, no, it's uh, it's a simple box. Uh, simple box. That's one of the nice things about this uh, company is yeah. none of their games are way overblown. They're good, solid games with a lot of, of potential and capability, but it's not crowded with too many different bits and bobs and, and things to do things. So it lays out nicely on the table. Yeah, you're, it's it's definitely not overproduced, but well produced. Mm -hmm. uh, wooden components, nice thick cardboard, nice box insert, but it's not perfect. Parts tend to fall out, especially the little ad adaptation counters. But it's still better than an empty box, in my opinion. Now, once players start sit down to actually play the game, and you're starting Galaxies Row, it becomes an action selection game where you're going to build buildings to collect resources in order to expand your control over the stars. Excuse me. Points are awarded for exploration. For holding majority and minority control, so this gets that area majority system that we were talking about earlier, and for completing gold cards, and through knowledge points gained through the use of those alien ally cards. No, yep, sorry. Now, each round, players are going to select two actions. They include explore, draw and play a world tile. They're drawn from a bag, they're two-sided, there's six different types of worlds. Uh, each world has a different cost for building stuff on it later. Some worlds can only host certain types of buildings as well. You also get a knowledge point for exploring. So I thought this was neat because it encourages people to explore just to get some victory points. Because otherwise, explore is not the hugest, the biggest action. You don't get a lot of stuff for doing it. Up next is adapt. That's learning to live on a different world. Once you've adapted to a planet, you can then build on it. At the same time, you are going to get an ally card. Now, these are a big part of the game. Ally cards represent alien species that assist you with the various actions. There's five piles of actions, one for each of the different, or sorry, allies, five piles of aliens, allies, for each of the different, one for each of the different actions. So five different actions, five different allies. And the way it works is after you complete an action, you can then use an ally of the appropriate type to gain some kind of bonus. The allies you have can each be used twice, but then they're returned to the bottom of their decks. So use Adapt to live on a new planet and to get allies. Building lets you build energy collectors, steel collectors, or colonies. Uh, those are the two main resources of the game, energy and steel. Collectors obviously produce those. Colonies are worth points at the end of the game for sector control. Whenever a player builds their sixth colony, the game ends. Also, when you build a building on a planet where someone else has already built, each player gets one resource of their choice. So this, the game encourages you to um, group together, right? So you're competing over areas instead of everyone sticking their own part of the board. 
Uh, harvest is really simple. Collect resources for your building. You get one resource for each collector you built using the build action. Conspire. Draw two mission cards or one ally and one mission card. Now, mission cards are hidden goals that score at the end of the game. And man, do they vary. They are all over the place. Uh, play certain buildings, have buildings on different planet types, have the certain things in the solar system, have different sets of allies. It's a crazy, huge deck with a lot of different combinations. Now, after you've finished completing your actions, the, the game doesn't end. You then have a bunch of limits you have to check. You're only allowed to hold 10 of each resource, five mission cards, and so on. No, uh, so this is basically uh, a 4X game that you can play in about an hour. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't call it, I'd say it's a 3X. Yeah, it's, uh, it's there, missing, there you're not really, no... you don't have the combat. Uh... Yeah, they're, they're, you're definitely exploiting systems, you're definitely expanding, you're definitely exploring, but there's no um, extermination. There right. is no direct player versus player interaction. Uh, the only thing you have is you might take a spot the opponent wants. That's about it. Or an ally card they want. So now I did note the game ends when one player plays their final colony. So once that happens, you get victory points for area control of the star system, the mission cards you've got, and you count those knowledge tokens. Players with the most points wins. Now, each player board in the game is two-sided. Now, the actions I just described are the human sides of the board, which are symmetrical. Every person plays the same. The opposite sides have an alien side, which makes the game asymmetrical. Now, what they've done here is one or more of those basic actions will be changed. They've been changed significantly. Like, there is a race that starts the game adapted to three planets, but can't ever take the adapt action or, adapt or land on the other three planets. There's another race that can never conspire, so they can never get gold cards for using the conspire action, but instead get mission cards whenever they adapt to new planets because they put out ambassadors. There's even a race that can build colonies on the stars instead of the planets. It's interesting. There's uh, there's some chat I'm seeing that's saying you shouldn't play it without the uh, the newest expansion or the only expansion huh. for it, uh, because it adds some balance. It, it solves some balance issues uh, okay. in the game, but uh, it, that, that could be a, a heavy player who's just sort of you know played it until they found all the uh, the little cracks that may exist in a game. That when when you've got this many moving pieces, this many yeah. uh, you know this many interactions between races and cards and card types and this level of asymmetry it would almost be hard to imagine not having some cracks that are going to appear in the, uh, yeah. in the system. The expansion must have just come out. Yeah. It's a 2019. Like it's a 2019. Seen. Yeah. I'm, I'm thinking it's probably like October, September, 2019. Cause I've never even seen an expansion. Uh, possibly. Before. So it might be late in the year. Uh, horizons exterminations is the, uh, okay. Yeah. So obviously I haven't tried that yet. No, no, so obviously. this is just on the base game. Um, so as I mentioned, while you're using, cards for your goals and you're using cards for your aliens it's not really a card driven game like the cards are going to give you some nice bonus actions but this game is an action selection resource management area majority game it's very much a euro style of area majority where you can't really influence other players actions i wouldn't go so far as to call it multiplayer solitaire but it's getting towards that issue you just try to build somewhere before someone else does or you take an ally they may want that's pretty much all you can do to actually like influence your opponent's play uh, yes, and, and Love and Mode is saying expansion adds the fourth X. It, it's extermination yeah. is what it is. Oh, so, there you go. Well, it makes sense. Yeah, it's called extermination. So, Perfectly makes sense. Uh, looks like it's up for pre-order on DM on Daily Magic. Yeah, so I don't, that means it's probably uh, not even out or, yet. Or well, actually, possibly not. That may have been a bad link. So, um, yeah. yeah. We'll see. So, overall, my thoughts on uh, Horizon. So, I got to say it's a solid board game. Um, I dig Axe Selection games, uh, like Race for the Galaxy, Puerto Rico, um, and this game does action selection well. Now, this isn't like Eminent Domain or Race, where everyone gets to follow and do what you pick. What you do only affects you. So again, it's very Euro-like that way. There's not a lot of player in interaction. What is unique to Horizons, though, and is really cool, is the way you get the allies to assist you with the actions. And having different aliens of each of the basic actions... And then a number of each of these aliens so that each deck's different with a bunch of different potential effects is really the highlight of this game. It's using these ally cards effectively that's key to winning a game of Horizons. Right. And uh, I did just find it. So it is up for sale on uh, the Daily Magic games. And it's just a, it's a small little uh, little deck, sort of like when they expand their Valeria decks. Um, okay, so it's, it's, it's a 15, a little, it's a little $15. It's a little bigger than okay. the expansion, but it's, it's still just... Uh, a few extra cards to uh, to get in there. Fair enough. Yeah. Now, what I was really surprised, besides the fact that it's a totally different game than I thought it was going to be, is how quick it is. 
Like you mentioned, it's under an hour, right? I would almost say, though, that this game can be too quick. Because uh, the game ends immediately when someone blails their sixth colony. And I found it can end what I would call prematurely. Because if a player just focuses on building those. So this is, maybe it's an outlier, but this is an example. We had one game that ended in under 15 minutes. Because a player started the game with a gold card that said, you get 10 points if you all you build is colonies. You never build any of the other buildings. So that's what he did. He built an engine, built six colonies as quickly as possible. Not even half the star systems were full of planets. And yet the game was over. Now, I got to admit, Mike was the one playing. He was pretty happy with himself. But for the rest of us, it wasn't a very rewarding experience at all. Now, how often is something like that going to become be possible? Like, is that... Is, is is someone going to be able to pull up that combo and burn through quickly? Or is that sort of a, an outlier and most of the time you're going to get a little bit more of a complete game for all those playing? I, the odds of drawing that card as your starting hand are obviously ra rather small. Like the, it's, a, it's a significant deck. I don't know. You could probably find somewhere online that lists how many cards are in the quest deck. Playing with all five players, we had the full deck. So it's a, it's a solid deck. Uh, but the thing is, the fact that we know that card's there, there are ways you could purposely aim for that strategy now. Now that the five of us who played could be like, huh, I could just keep taking the, um, I already forget, conspire action to keep getting more cards until I find that and purposely not build anything. But that might waste a lot of time. I, I think it was an outlier, but it was a bad one. Like that was a, like, if that had been my first experience with colonies, we might not even have this review because I might have been a one and done. Like it was that bad. Interesting. Uh, Levin Moat in the chat room is mentioning that it's definitely an outlier in that generally building colonies is very difficult uh, without collectors. So, yeah. Okay. See, in that case, he was playing a character that had to use victory points to build because right. we were using the asymmetric side of the board, which actually gets me to my next point. Because the other thing I didn't expect is I like the human side better which is weird for me because normally I love asymmetry in games and we talk about that often, but in Horizon, the area alien boards didn't feel interesting. They rather, they felt limiting uh, rather than having some cool new thing I could do. Cause I was an alien. There were basic actions that I felt were needed to be able to play well that I just couldn't do anymore. And instead I had to go through a weird workaround to get done the same thing I wanted, wanted to do on my human side of the board. And I just found they were punishing and not fun. Like, in this case, I think the asymmetry is too extreme, and it changed the races too much. And I do, like you mentioned it earlier, I did see online when doing some research that some people do seem to think there are broken combos with the, the, the asymmetry with some of the races, that some are more powerful than other ones. Right. Uh, and it's, it sounds like, I'm, from what I'm hearing and, and from what I read, it's sort of, it's one of those things where if you've got that right, the, the cards and... The, the races become a problem. So if the car, if the deal, if the deal works out nicely, everything's going to be fine. But, uh, Oh, well, interestingly, Leva mode is telling us that something slipped by them in production. So, uh, apparently we've got a fan in the, uh, <laughs> yep. from the company in the chat room right now. So, uh, we'll have to check. You'll have to check the, the FAQ for this one. And maybe we have our, oh, next so there, there are two of the boards. So we play with all five boards. So two of the five players, we're playing with boards that have a mistake on them. Interesting to know. Because I got to say, like, it, wait, I did not enjoy it. I, I, the game, I did not enjoy the asymmetry. It was neat to see how everyone was so different. Because they are. They are very different. And that was neat to see. Um, I'm going to have to give that another look then with the errata. That's, that's frustrating. So overall, um, again, with the caveat that we obviously haven't played with the full errata in play, is I gotta say it's solid. It's it's a really solid game. There's a lot here to like. I uh, love the artwork. Love the the components. Love Miko's artwork. Box inserts good, except the, the little things kind of fall out now and then. But you keep it flat. It's good. The rule books clear. Um, you can actually see we've got an unboxing video. If you head up to head over to our um, YouTube channel, you can see the unboxing video and check it out yourself. Um, game's fun. The mechanics are solid, and I do really like the ally system. And while I'm not a huge fan of the asymmetric aliens, everything works. It works well enough. At its core, it's a good game. The problem is, it's just that. It's just, it's it's a good game. It's fun. It's a good way to pass the time. It's nothing more. Uh, it's not one of those games where I go to bed thinking about it, and I'm like, oh, man, I need to, uh, I need to try this next time I play. Uh, I, the way it feels is I don't feel like I'm going to be talking about that epic game of Horizons we had about a month ago. 
it's just not overly memorable, right? Like, it's good. It's a really good game. It's a solid game. It's well designed. You can tell it's well played tested. It's just not great. It just, there's nothing here that feels overly new or refreshing. Right. It works. It works well. It just doesn't wow me. Well, I think it's interesting. And I, and I think this is, this is one of those things where we're getting it again. We've gotten into a problem that we've talked about before on the show where it, it's almost that one and done. Because to me, this sounds like a really great game, a four X game. Once you add in the expansion well, and you add in that fourth X, um, a 3.5 X or that, that, that can be expanded to a four X. Um, and you can actually buy the, the whole thing in, in, uh, as one, uh, the Kickstarter came with both, I guess. Oh, that's cool. So yep, you, yep. you can buy the whole horizons with the whole four X version for 60 bucks off their website. Uh, and you play a four X game in 60 minutes. I mean, that's, yep. that's something you don't really get. Um, and so if, you know, someone like me who's, you know, got the family and we don't have a, a full out gaming table that we can go to. And I, I wanted to play something that sort of full, but do it right. quickly. I think that's a really great place to be. I think one of the problems is that as, you know, hobby gamers, we're always looking for that experience. Mm -hmm. um, whereas this is a solid game and it's meant to be a solid game, not necessarily that experience that I think we're all a lot of, a lot of the time, you know, hoping for and searching for, especially when we think of 4X games. Yeah. You know, it's not it, Twilight it's, Imperium. It's, it's, it's not that epic, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah. It's not yeah. Twilight Imperium. I said the, the the way the races the aliens work the alien allies is a really neat system and I don't know I just feel like it needs to be part of something bigger uh, the asymmetric races I I don't know I, I usually I love asymmetry I'm gonna have to check out like I said the the fact that there's an errata for it that, that that's unfortunate that that slipped by the production and got out there because I wonder if it that'll improve on it so I'm gonna have to give the game another chance at least have, uh, at least trying with those optional rules or the errata sorry the errata applied. See if that makes a difference. But like I said, it's a solid game. There, there's nothing. I can't complain about Horizons in any way. It, it's one of the better games I've played this year. It just, it doesn't have that wow factor. It doesn't have that je ne sais quoi, right? Like, just doesn't quite get there that I'm like, oh, let's go play Horizons. I just don't quite get that from it. And... Right. Well, I'm definitely, uh, the first errata I've found is uh, on the Dredge, D-R-E-J. Uh, it's uh, tap, build a collector, Gain one energy for each energy collector or gain one metal for each metal collector. Uh, and I guess the yeah, or it seems like it's the, uh, the, to be the honest, change. I don't remember. Offhand. Uh, and I, I'm not seeing the other errata in there, but I'm sure I can find it, uh, when we're not, when we're not chatting. Um, no. And I mean, again, I am, I'm a huge fan of the, the Valeria games. Uh, and, and I think that that makes me interested in playing this. And again, mm -hmm. most of the time, because, a lot of times, you know, when I am down and we, we don't have enough time, uh, we don't ever play a 4X game because there's no, never time not. for a 4X game. Mm -hmm. So to be able to play something like that in a shorter amount of time definitely has uh, a an interest to me. I will say, like, uh, not that I'm great on putting down other games, but compared to, say, Master of the Ryan, the card game, which is another 4X style game that you played in about four hours. Or, sorry, about four hours. In about an hour. I came out wrong. I gotta say I like this better. Like, uh, uh, this was better than the Master Ryan card game. It was a better use of the allies and stuff like that. It was a neater experience. Right. And yes. Uh, so now we just need Daily Magic Games to send me a copy of the expansion so I can do a review of it and explain to everyone how it gets better with the review, well, with, the, with the expansion. Well, uh, apparently, apparently, uh, <laughs> Levi in the uh, chat room is uh, Levi Moat. Uh, and a Species 1825 Transfigure Action is... Uh, uh, apparently incorrect as printed. It should be transfigure, gain one knowledge, play, uh, draw and play a world, activate that world or take an ally is the, uh, the correct. All right. So, all right. Uh, we have jumped all over the place now, so I'm not sure where you want to, uh, to jump. I, in. I, I, I've, I've highlighted uh, yep, you. There we are. So that was our review, uh, review of Horizons from Daily Magic Games. Have you played Horizons? What did you think? Uh, let us know through social media or email at mo at tabletopbellhop.com. Now you can find this review and more like it over on our blog at tabletopbellhop.com. 